Logical fallacies are like bugs in an argument, and people use them because it makes their argument seem strong, but when you actually start to take them apart, it'll begin to hit you like, huh? what the fuck? Because the logic runs that bad. And so here are 15 logical fallacies to always look out for in any argument. Number one, the burden of proof fallacy. This fallacy assumes that because there isn't evidence presented against something, that it automatically follows that that something is true. I'm just convinced that my dog's been a squirrel in a previous life. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Oh wait, you can't, so it's true. Number Number two, the straw man fallacy. This happens when someone oversimplifies the issue that you're bringing up or just wildly misrepresents the argument. It was cool to finally meet your parents tonight. Yeah, who'd you like more? Uh, I guess your mom. Wow, you must really hate my dad. Number three, the bandwagon fallacy. This occurs when someone says something like, it's true because everyone thinks that it's true, which is an irrational argument because once upon a time, there was a day when all doctors thought that smoking cigarettes was perfectly healthy, or at least not unhealthy. And there was also slavery in its fashionable practice for hundreds of years. Number four, the appeal to authority fallacy. This means that you invoke an authority figure's opinion in order to back you up so that you add more validity to your argument. And while it's not wrong to have someone with leverage on your side, it doesn't mean that it's all you need to have for a valid argument. So our company is bleeding money this quarter by promoting a digital product in the Yellow Pages? What gives? Ah, well Elon Musk says that Yellow Pages are the best approach, so we're gonna keep doing that. Number five, the false dilemma fallacy. This happens when someone throws up two extremes as the only options available for you to pick. This is why this fallacy is also referred to as the black or white fallacy, because it's just one or the other. And this is ridiculous because in almost every route forward, there is way more than just two options to select from. Look, you can either agree with Phil's marketing plan or just let the project go to shit. There is no other option, David. Or I could just quit. Number six, the hasty generalization fallacy. This happens when someone jumps to wild conclusions without having enough evidence to back it up. Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates both dropped out of college and became billionaires, right? So I'm going to drop out of college. Number seven, the slothful induction fallacy. Now this is the opposite of the previous fallacy, which is when people are so slow to come to a conclusion or refuse to come to a conclusion regardless of how much evidence there is. I don't get it. Every time I go to Rio, I get robbed. Because every time you go, you wear designer clothes in a huge fucking Chanel bag. Mm, no, I think it's because I tracked back Capricorns. Number eight, the correlation causation fallacy. Essentially what happens in this one is that a person mistakes a correlation for a causation. Yo, I got a promotion this last July. Oh, nice. And I also didn't floss in the month of July. Oh. I must have got the promotion because I didn't floss. Number nine, the anecdotal evidence fallacy. This occurs when the premise of an argument is solely grounded in anecdotes, meaning their personal experience. And then a conclusion is drawn purely from that experience, which in itself is sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. And a clear example for when sometimes maybe shit is brought to you by hundreds of years of women being seen as witches and burned alive for it. Number 10, the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. Basically, you shoot at the side of a barn, then you paint your target, putting your bullseye on the cluster of bullet holes. And that's proving your superior marksmanship. This metaphor translates to when a person is hell-bent on a conclusion, and so they work backwards and find data to support that conclusion. Kanye West would make such a great president. He is so well-spoken. Mm, did you hear his podcast with Joe Rogan? Did you hear Donda too? Number 11, the middle ground fallacy. As the name indicates, this fallacy assumes that when you compromise two conflicting points, that you will automatically arrive at the right answer. And this is so without considering that the two conflicting points can either be entirely true or entirely false. Here's an example. John thinks that the best way to increase sales in the business is to change the product's look completely. But Paul thinks that any changes will stop all sales. So naturally, the best approach must be to meet somewhere in the middle and change some of the product's look. Number 12, the personal incredulity fallacy. Now, just because a person or a group of people don't understand why a claim is true, doesn't make the claim invalid. I don't understand graphy, so it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah, there must be something else holding all this stuff down. Number 13, the no true Scots fallacy. This is used when an argument heavily relies on a generalization of some sort to make an argument. And so when someone comes back with a counter argument, they just deflect it by putting more emphasis on the generalization. No real rock star has ever stayed sober. Well, Lou Reed actually stayed sober for over 30 years. Well, no real rock star has ever stayed sober. Number 14, the ad hominem fallacy. Now this one is particularly pathetic. This fallacy occurs when someone attacks another person on a personal level, like by the way they look or dress.
stress, and they do so in order to dismiss their argument entirely. Eating a lot of processed sugars is bad for your health, you know. Uh, you're a fat ass, so what do you know about health? Number 15, the two quo quo fallacy, aka the you also fallacy. This fallacy is the verbal equivalent of fighting fire with fire, meaning that you answer criticism with more criticism instead of actually properly addressing it. I don't think Phil should teach boxing class. He doesn't have a lot of experience. Well, you don't have a lot of boxing experience. I know that's not the point. And number 16, the fallacy fallacy. So ironically, just because someone's argument sucks and is full of fallacies, it doesn't necessarily mean that their conclusion is wrong. Paul voted in favor for hiring more salespeople because in the last company he was with, it made his job easier, which is an anecdotal fallacy. But because Chris doesn't like Paul and he noticed his fallacy, he decides to vote down on hiring more salespeople, even though the company definitely needs more sales. And that is it. I hope you all are all well equipped now to identify these most common of pesky fallacies and that y'all will inform those who are not yet aware of them. Keep the streets safe out there. Until next week, peace.